So welcome back guys for part 2 of this Call of Duty Hadred rant. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the first part. Here's a link to the first part if you didn't get to see it. If you did, continue on and enjoy. Another problem relating to publishers is now that they're trying to make their games more like Call of Duty. Not just with the sales, but with the way the game plays and with their target audience. Rather than keeping their games to a niche and a select group of gamers that actually enjoy the game and enjoy what they want from that game, they're trying to expand on their demographic and get as many people as possible. And that includes the Call of Duty gamers. A typical Call of Duty gamer wants explosions, wants fast action gameplay, wants action around every corner. And that is a severe issue when other games that are really not supposed to be like that are starting to take these traits on. Best example is Dead Space 3. The first two Dead Spaces were brilliant games. Horror genre defining games. Not the level of Resident Evil, no, but still two great games. Tight corners, dark spaces, monster boxes, scares constantly. The threat of walking down a corridor and not knowing if there's going to be something jumping up at you around the bend was terrifying and Dead Space 2 improved on that, it made it more scary, while also making it a bit more action-y, but still keeping that whole horror genre demographic. Dead Space 3 completely ruled up whatever notes they had, threw them out the window, and said, right, let's make this more action-y, let's have more scripted events, let's have less horror, more action, and they completely botched the whole thing. The worst one in the series, a horrible ending, horrible reviews, and they lost whatever demographic or whatever niche gamers that they had just because they wanted the seals of Call of Duty. They wanted to bring these Call of Duty gamers in and try and take control, but they failed. And then because of they failed, now Dead Space has been discontinued and they're no longer making any games. No matter what way you look at it, it's slowly starting to ruin things. People enjoy the experience, yes, even I occasionally like to jump on Call of Duty every now and again because it's easy to get a couple of good games and a couple of good montage clips or whatever you want from it and it's a quick experience, you know, if I have 10 minutes to spare before I go out I sometimes think, oh, I can hop on Call of Duty here quickly and get a game or two, see if I can have some videos. And because of this easiness of gameplay, it's really starting to affect my other games. Which nicely leads into my next point. You would think I planned this out or something. Seriously, it's weird. The ease of play of Call of Duty has started to filter into my other games. Games that are actually harder to play and require a bit more work to actually get good at. I recently got rid of Battlefield 3 because I was so bad at it. I couldn't hop on Battlefield and get a couple of good games... I honestly got rid of it because the recoil and the guns were so high that I couldn't get any kills really. The running and gunning attitude that I got from Call of Duty really didn't help in Battlefield at all. It's only as of lately that I've been playing Halo Reach and Halo 4 that I've actually started to get good at them. Because I haven't been playing Call of Duty as much and I've been playing games that require more skill and work to get a kill, I've started to get better at other games. The lack of skill that Call of Duty really needs is actually quite a game breaker for both Call of Duty and how it affects me in other games. The unbalanced guns, the ridiculous shotguns, kill streaks, the quick scoping are really game breakers and the amount of head glitches that go on in that game is quite ridiculous and you think they would have that sorted out by now. This was a problem back in Modern Warfare 2. Games like Halo and Battlefield 3 and Gears of War Judgment require more work to get a kill. In Gears of War, the Nasher really is the preferred weapon. You can go up and get a one shot with that, but in most cases you have to know how to zoom in quickly, get a shot off, move, zoom in, get a shot off. With Halo 4, you have to understand how the DMR works and how the battle rifle works and how you have to wait for that reticule to come in before firing the next shot. You have to get the timing down and you also have to be able to get good accuracy on the head because most gamers in Halo aim for the head because the head has the most damage. In Call of Duty, 
You can walk into a room, spray and pray, and a lucky bullet will hit somebody in the head or the chest and get that kill. Someone once described Call of Duty as like a slot machine, and it's all about luck. The kills are all about luck. There's no skill required. You can just walk in, and if someone gets that lucky shot on you, sure, doesn't matter how much better you are than them, because they just got lucky. It used to be, in other games, I didn't really care how I played. I could hop in Battlefield Bad Company 2, have a great time just dying, ridiculously amount of dying in that game. Could be by a tank, could be by a noob tube, it would not bother me whatsoever. But because Call of Duty is so centred around kills, and kill streaks and kill to death ratios, and getting that great gameplay that I could throw up on my channel, I get so annoyed and frustrated when people get those lucky kills in me. I recently watched a video trying to get ideas for this commentary, I'm not going to lie. And the guy said, when you first get Call of Duty, you don't care about anything because you're just on it to have fun. But after a while, when you start to get better, you start to realize, hey, how'd that guy get a kill on me? I'm better than him. And you start to get this sense of arrogance. And no matter what way you think about it, if you really look at yourself, you will find that sense of arrogance there as well. And that's what causes the annoyance and frustration. For me, anyway, I don't know about anybody else. And that's really why I hate this game. <laughs> My last point, and one that kind of affects me the most, is the control that Call of Duty has over the YouTube community. YouTube is really centered around Call of Duty and Minecraft. Both are very equal levels on the amount of people that watch and, up and upload their videos. But because of YouTube, it's really changed the mindset of how people play Call of Duty. On YouTube, everything is about high kills, the amazing sniper shots, the quad feeds, the ridiculous gameplays. So everyone wants these. Everyone wants to get all these, so then they do what they feel they need to do. If they have to camp in a corner, then they will do it to get that high kill to death ratio, which then ruins the experience for everybody else. Back in Call of Duty 4, if anyone could think back that far, it really was only about having fun. Or winning the game. I remember I used to just hop in the game, didn't care. Just ran about, mindless, headless, whatever. Ran about with a sniper rifle because it was fun. Ran about with a gun, whatever. If I wanted to do well in the game, I'd run about with a gun. If I wanted to have a bit of fun, I would run about with a sniper rifle. And I didn't care. I didn't care about kills. I didn't care about whatever. If I wanted to win the game, I would play to win. But that's all changed. It's all about the high kill to death. It's all about the amazing kill streaks. it's all about the montage clips. But that's what I like about the YouTube community that I am a part of. I've kind of sat here and slagged off a lot of people that I'm subscribed to, me and channel source. What I really like about the YouTube community that I'm a part of now is that regardless of whatever video they put on, it's all about the commentary. The Christian gaming community is so brilliant because we only care about what they're talking about. Yes, it's nice to have like a video in the background to watch when you're hearing Judgment Awaits talk about pornography, which was brilliant. Or a Kingdom Soldier asking people to pray for him because he's worried. Or Butterbean coming on and talking about hope. Or Pat's fan talking about his favourite games. Or Jesus Freak talking about sex. It's just brilliant. It's about the quality of the commentary that we're listening to that makes the Christian gaming community so brilliant. We don't care about gameplay. It's nice to have an awesome game in the background, yes, but it's about what we're talking about. It's the message that we're giving people, whether it's glorifying God or just having a bit of fun. doesn't matter because that's what's really important. So guys, I hope I haven't offended anybody. I know for a lot of people Call of Duty is the main thing that they put out in their channel so please don't feel insulted in any way, I didn't mean anything by it, but it's all my own opinion of course. That's really all I wanted to say, if you enjoyed the video give it a like, if you want to subscribe to the channel for similar stuff please do by clicking the little jacket potato guy up in the corner there somewhere, I, he moves. He's there somewhere, I promise. I've been looking forward to this commentary for so long, so it's brilliant to get this out of the way. But as always, guys, my name is Jagger Potato, I am a Christian gamer, and I will see you all next time.